Set It Off is a 1996 American crime action film directed by F. Gary Gray. The screenplay was crafted by Takashi Buffett in collaboration with Caitlin Yeer. The leading cast included Jada Pinkett Smith, Queen Latifah, Vivica Fox, and Kimberly Elsie. The storyline revolves around a close-knit group of friends devising a plan to rob a bank in Los Angeles, California, with the hope of securing a better future for themselves and their families. However, their unity is shattered by internal conflicts. Upon its debut, the film achieved significant commercial success, with the soundtrack reaching number 4 on the Billboard 200 chart. Set It Off remains a standout film of its era. In this video, we will highlight some of the cast members who have passed away. Don't forget to show your support by liking, commenting, and subscribing to our channel for more content. Number 1. Greg Bronson Greg Bronson is another member of the cast from the 1996 film Set It Off, who has passed away, recognized primarily as the police officer by fans of the show. Actor and extra, Greg Bronson was born on September 2, 1954, in Tuba City, Arizona. The fifth, in a family of 12 children, Bronson grew up in Flagstaff, Arizona. He attended the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Grade School, Flagstaff Junior High, and Flagstaff High School. After graduating from the latter in 1973, Greg worked as a manager in his father's lighting store before eventually relocating to California in 1985. Bronson started appearing in numerous films and TV shows, often in uncredited minor roles in the mid-1990s. In 2004, Greg returned to Arizona, where he began collaborating with the local independent film industry and worked with the staff and students in the theater department at Scottsdale Community College. Bronson succumbed to a prolonged battle with cancer at the age of 62 on January 7, 2017. He was survived by nearly all of his numerous siblings. The kid in school that didn't want to raise his hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if somebody else had the answer, let him do it. You know, and then, uh, so one day... Number 2. Natalie Dissell Reed Natalie Dissell Reed played a minor part in the 1996 film Set It Off. Reed portrayed the character Tanika, and although her stint was brief, she succeeded in adding intrigue and memorability to the film. Natalie Dizelle, whose comedic skills contributed to the cult status of the 1997 movie BAPS, among a generation of fans and who later starred in the ensemble cast of the early 2000s TV series Eve, passed away on DQ7 at her residence in Los Angeles. She was 53. The cause was colon cancer, as confirmed by her former manager Dolores Robinson. Renowned for her on-screen comedic timing and optimistic demeanor off-screen, Ms. Dizel embarked on her acting journey in the 1990s, a period when opportunities for non-white and plus-size actors were limited but gradually expanding. In 1996, Ms. Dizel made a guest appearance in a single episode of the family-oriented sitcom Family Matters and secured a role in the women-centric action film Set It Off. The following year, she played the sidekick in the movie Baps, a fish-out-of-water comedy that would shape Ms. Dizel's career for the next two decades. She portrayed Mickey while Ms. Barry took on the role of Nisi, two Georgia women with extravagant hair, significant egos, and grand aspirations of making it big as dancers in California. However, their plans take an unexpected turn when they find themselves working for an affluent older white man in Beverly Hills. The film, with its title standing for Black American Princesses, gained more popularity among fans than critics. Although Janet Maslin of the New York Times was reserved about the plot, she praised Ms. Dizel for providing lots of comic relief. Robert Townsend, the movie's director, recalled the challenge he faced in finding the right actor for the character of Mickey. I couldn't find anyone that I thought had the charisma and would create the comedy chemistry, he said in a statement. Then an actor friend mentioned a talented newcomer in his acting class. So Mr. Townsend went to meet this newcomer, Ms. Dizel. She displayed absolute brilliance with her innocent country charm, he wrote. He was determined to cast her in the role, but studio executives were initially resistant. During the official audition, Ms. Dizelle entered a room filled with Hollywood heavyweights. Visibly nervous, she greeted with a high yawl in her southern drawl. Ms. Barry extended a friendly hug, and their chemistry was unbelievable. She was cast on the spot, Mr. Townsend recounted. 
In a statement, Ms. Berry expressed that Ms. Dizel had demonstrated that it was acceptable to be silly and humorous while remaining sincere and exceptionally kind. She mentioned that Ms. Dizel embodied real black women, not the stereotypes associated with them. In 1997, Ms. Dizel also took on the role of Minerva, a stepsister to Cinderella, in a made-for-television movie featuring the singer Brandy as the lead, with Whitney Houston as the fairy godmother and Whoopi Goldberg as Queen Constantina. Ms. Robinson, recalling Ms. Dizel's words, stated that the actress loved the role, considering it one of her favorites. She had the opportunity to be in a fairy tale transformed from white to black. Ms. Robinson emphasized the significance of such representation, saying, for young black kids to see stories that include them, even fairy tales, is such an, I belong and I am in this world too, message. Natalie Dizelle was born in Alexandria, Louisiana, on July 12, 1967. Her father, Paul Dizelle, served as an executive groundskeeper at the England Air Force Base in Alexandria. Her mother, Thelma Dizelle, initially worked as a cafeteria employee and later became an administrative assistant at Peabody Magnet High School, where Natalie, along with her sisters Paula and Kalisa, and brother Sherman, all graduated. On April 6, 2003, Ms. Dizelle married Leonard Reed. The couple had a son, Sereno, and two daughters, Summer and Sasha. While Ms. Dizelle adopted her husband's surname, she continued to professionally use Natalie Dizelle. She is survived by her husband, three children, two sisters, a brother, and her father. Much like her character in Baps, Ms. Dizelle, inspired by the 1950 film All About Eve, ventured west to pursue stardom. She reached out to Ms. Robinson, one of the few black women working as a manager at the time, through a cold call and requested a meeting. Ms. Robinson, reflecting on her initial hesitations, shared, I wasn't eager to take on too many black clients because it was just too challenging to find them work. She added, and being black myself, that's quite a statement to make. I had two children I was trying to put through college, so I had to take on people that I thought could make money and people that I thought could work. Despite her reservations, Ms. Robinson recognized Ms. Dizelle's spirit and agreed to manage her. I just sensed this spirit, she said. She was just such a humorous, uplifting, positive person. And I just felt like there wasn't going to be any stopping her. Ms. Dizelle maintained a consistent presence in the entertainment industry from the mid-1990s to the early 2000s, primarily focusing on television. By 2003, she had become part of the ensemble cast of EVE, which had a three-season run on UPN, concluding in 2006. Jacarius Johnson, the creator and producer of a musical adaptation of BAPS, shared that he had contacted Ms. Dizelle and convinced her to reprise her role in his stage production. However, in mid-March, approximately two weeks before the scheduled opening night, the onset of the coronavirus pandemic compelled Mr. Johnson to cancel those arrangements. Subsequently, there were intentions to live stream the show, but Ms. Dizelle fell unwell. She had expressed eagerness to participate in the production, according to Mr. Johnson. The excitement was that she would finally have the opportunity to connect with the fans who played a pivotal role in her career, he remarked. Torture my poor ass gentle loving vagina. <laughs> Spending their days constructing psycho products and nasty ideas to undermine my pussy. <laughs> vagina motherfuckers. <laughs> All this shit, they're constantly trying to shove up us. Number 3, Charlie Robinson. Charlie Robinson, the actor who portrayed Nate in the 1996 film Set It Off, is another cast member from the film who has sadly passed away. Robinson, a seasoned actor best known for his role as Mac, the amiable and practical court clerk on the enduring NBC sitcom Night Court, passed away on Sunday in Los Angeles at the age of 75. The family confirmed his death at the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center, stating that the cause was a heart attack and organ failure induced by septic shock. Robinson also battled adenocarcinoma, a cancer affecting glandular cells. Robinson's illustrious acting career spanned six decades, featuring notable roles in television, film, and on stage. His initial credited on-screen appearance was in Jack Nicholson's directorial debut, Drive, he said, in 1971. His breakthrough came in 1984, when he was cast as Macintosh Robinson, 
affectionately known as Mac, on Night Court, then in its second season. Night Court, airing on Thursdays at 9.30 p.m. after Cheers, unfolded in a Manhattan courtroom, hosting an array of eccentric characters in the wee hours. Although centered around Harry Anderson as the quirky judge Harry Stone, the show was truly an ensemble piece. While John Larroquette rose to stardom as Dan Fielding, a risque prosecutor, Robinson became a fan favorite as Mac, a composed Vietnam veteran turned court clerk with a penchant for cardigan sweaters, plaid shirts, and knit neckties. He portrayed this role for the entirety of the show's nine-season run and even directed three episodes. Born in Houston on November 9, 1945, to Plain and Aura Barnes Robinson, he served in the Army and briefly attended the University of Houston before embarking on an acting career. In the late 1960s, he participated in the Studio 7 workshop at the Houston Music Theater and received training at the Alley Repertory Theater before relocating to Los Angeles. In LA, his family noted that he studied at the Actors Studio, the Mark Taper Forum, and the Inner City Cultural Center. Apart from Night Court, Robinson appeared in numerous TV shows, including The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Key and Peel, This Is Us, Malcolm and Eddie, Grey's Anatomy, How I Met Your Mother, and NCIS. Before joining the Night Court cast, he was a regular on Buffalo Bill, the Dabney Coleman sitcom that, despite lasting only two seasons, garnered a cult following. His film credits encompass The Black Gestapo, Grey Lady Down, and The House Bunny. Mr. Robinson received the 2006 Ovation Award for Outstanding Actor in a play for his portrayal of Troy Maxson in a staging of August Wilson's Fences at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Later in his career, Mr. Robinson had recurring roles on the CW comedy drama Heart of Dixie and the CBS sitcom Mom. In 2020, he appeared in Love in the Time of Corona, a limited series on the freeform cable channel centered on individuals seeking connections during the coronavirus pandemic. His spouse, Dolorita Noonan Robinson, assumed the role of his nurse. Alongside his wife, Mr. Robinson is survived by his mother, children Luca, Charlie, Christian, and Byron, brother Virgil Carl Robinson, as well as several grandchildren and great-grandchildren. One of Mr. Robinson's projects alongside Wendell Pierce in James Anthony Tyler's play Some Old Black Man at the University of Michigan. Mr. Pierce, famed for his portrayal of a gruff detective on The Wire, enacted a college professor moving his father, played by Mr. Robinson, into his Harlem penthouse. He engaged in commercial endeavors for Nextel where he inquired whether a worker was agitating my dots after stumbling upon two dispatchers fixating on the dots, which symbolized delivery workers, on a computer screen. Additionally, he featured in Old Spice commercials, portraying the head coach of the NFL's Denver Broncos, sharing the screen with perennial All-Pro Bronco linebacker Vaughn Miller. In 2010, Robinson participated in the Oregon Shakespeare Festival and took on a co-starring role in the film Jackson, directed by J.F. Lawton. Robinson assumed the role of Troy and August Wilson's Fences at Southern California's South Coast Repertory in Costa Mesa from January 22, 2010, until February 21, 2010. In September 2013, he revisited the theater to embody Willie Loman in Death of a Salesman. In 2015, he portrayed Mr. Munson, the sightless tenant on Mom, whom Bonnie avoids, assisting with apartment issues. Mr. Pierce shared on Twitter that he, Mr. Robinson, and the play's production team underwent quarantine together for nearly a month. Only 27 days in quarantine with Charlie Robinson, and I got to appreciate the man, not just the wonderful actor of great charm and skill on stage, TV, and film, Mr. Pierce conveyed, in the life of an actor, the only things you take with you are the work that you do and the people you do it with. During an interview, Mr. Pierce conveyed that he had recently concluded a run as Willie Loman in Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman in London. Mr. Robinson had previously embodied the role in 2013, and the two connected over portraying Willie, a traditionally white character. Mr. Pierce revealed that Mr. Robinson encouraged him to always remain a student of his craft. He just schooled me on the sort of actors that I wanted to be, he expressed. I've been thinking about how I put my best days behind me and the way he worked. Well, it just gave me inspiration. Oh, you're not, you're not from that, that show, that's not you, you know. <laughs> so I get it all, I get it all the time. What do, what do they say about your character, about, you know, when they, when they run into you? Well, they, they, most of them. 
Number 4. Thomas Jefferson Byrd Thomas Jefferson Byrd, renowned for portraying Luther in the 1996 film Set It Off, is among the cast members who have sadly passed away. In a tragic incident in Atlanta, Georgia, an emergency call was placed around 1.45 a.m. on October 3, 2020, revealing that Byrd was discovered unresponsive with multiple gunshot wounds in his back and was pronounced dead at the age of 70. Atlanta police's homicide detectives initiated an investigation to determine the circumstances surrounding the incident. On October 17, 2020, a 30-year-old man named Antonio Dimitris Rhinus was arrested in connection with Byrd's murder. Shortly after the tragic event, Craig Wyckoff, a friend and former representative of Mr. Byrd's, indicated that Mr. Byrd had engaged in an argument at a store, speculating that the altercation might have led to the fatal encounter. The police refrained from confirming this account. Thomas Jefferson Byrd, an American character actor, featured prominently in several films directed by Spike Lee. Notably, he was nominated for the Tony Award for Best Featured Actor in a play for his role in the 2003 Broadway revival of Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Byrd, an alumnus of Morris Brown College, held a Bachelor of Science degree in Education and later attained a Master of Fine Arts degree in Dance from the California Institute of the Arts. He was also a member of the Omega Psi Phi fraternity Alpha Sigma chapter. Thomas Jefferson Byrd contributed to several Spike Lee films, including Clockers, 1995, Girl 6, 1996, Get on the Bus, 1996, He Got Game, 1998, Bamboozled, 2000, Red Hook Summer, 2012, Da Sweet Blood of Jesus, 2014, and Kyrak, 2015. Spike Lee established a GoFundMe page to raise funds for Mr. Bird's children. Notably, Mr. Bird garnered a Tony Award nomination for his sole Broadway appearance in the 2003 production of Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. A memorial service for Mr. Bird took place in Atlanta, with the proceedings streamed online to reach hundreds of viewers. It ain't no pleasing you. There are those who just aren't pleased. There are those who are not pleased. With if they got work, they're not pleased. If they don't have work, they, they, they treat it both. We love hearing from you, so please drop your comments below. Share your thoughts, ideas, or any topics you'd like us to explore in future videos. Your feedback is invaluable and helps shape the direction of our content. Now, before we say our goodbyes, Remember to turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. We have exciting plans ahead, and we want you to be a part of every moment. Thank you once again for being an incredible audience. Whether you're starting or ending your day with us, we appreciate you choosing our channel. Until next time, take care, stay curious, and keep spreading those positive vibes.